uh, welcome to Digital Talks. Uh, can can you please uh, uh, say hello to everybody? Hi, Marcelo. How are you? Uh, thank you for having me. Nice to be here. So first of all, Adam, can you explain to our audience what is digital accessibility and how it can be achieved using the Equal App Solutions? Yeah, well, uh, sure, Marcelo. Um, well, um, digital accessibility is the process of making digital products such as um, websites, uh, mobile apps, documents, uh, videos and other digital tools accessible to everyone. So it basically about providing all users uh, access to the same information regardless of the impairments uh, they may have. Um, now, now I'm not sure if our audience are aware of the fact that there are currently more than 2 billion disabled people in the world. Uh, this is 25% uh, of the world population uh, and that's all according to the World Health Organization. Um, so, so, so this is the largest minority in the world and we're talking about disabilities like uh, like auditory, uh, cognitive, intellectual, uh, uh, epileptic, uh, uh, visually impaired, blind, and, and even the elderly population. Um, so digital accessibility is the basic human right that everyone deserves the same access and accom accommodations to, to the basic and most popular thing in the, in the world called the internet. Um, and, and especially now during uh, COVID-19 pandemic, uh, you can see many more people that are now reliant on, on digital means uh, for core daily activities uh, like uh, shopping online, uh, reading newspapers, uh, apply for a loan, uh, study online, online meetings. So all of those must be accessible for everyone. And this is everyone's responsibility. Uh, so, so at Equal Web, we develop an automated solution uh, based on machine learning and AI technology that can basically make the entire website accessible with just the need to insert one line code. Uh, so it's easy as, uh, as installing uh, Google Analytics. Okay, so it takes about two minutes to do it and that's it. And from that part, our solution is basically covering the website with the right accessibility suit and fixing automatically uh, most or even all the accessibility issues uh, depend on the website. Uh, and after that, our team of accessibility experts can uh, check the website and, and do some manual testing, testing and, and remediate all of the remaining accessibility issues that ha have not been uh, fixed automatically. A very good explanation, Adam. And just to give local perspective and local numbers, uh, here in Brazil, there are 60 million people with special needs. Uh, out of them, 45 million people have any kind of, uh, of disability, according to I IBG, IBGE. Uh, so uh, it, it, uh, it's very similar to what we see worldwide. Uh, I would say that 25% of uh, Brazilians also have uh, the same need. Uh, but Adam, uh, digital accessibility is a new subject to Brazilian companies, uh, despite the Brazilian inclusion law having been enacted for uh, five years now. Uh, how is this similar to what happened uh, in Europe, in the US and in, in Israel uh, before companies were subject to very high uh, fines? Well, well, digital accessibility has uh, been around for uh, more than a decade. And I will not lie, uh, all countries that has regulation and, and enforce them, uh, those are the countries that you can see more accessible websites. And, and it's also a matter of awareness, I think. Uh, and, and you guys are doing a great job in Brazil, increasing the awareness in digital inclusion. Uh, and, and hopefully you guys will uh, have more and more uh, companies uh, uh, that will want to make their uh, website accessible now that it's so easy and not expensive using uh, equal web solution. 
Uh, yes, Adam, and uh, as a matter of fact, we've been experiencing a very good reception from uh, 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 every company in the local market. Uh, but Adam, uh, as authorities are not finding yet websites for accessibility issues, uh, what would you say are the major benefits of being uh, WCAG 2.1 compliant? Um, well, well, that's a great question, Marcel. Uh, well, in my belief, I think that compliance and lawsuits need to be the last reason of why to make a website accessible. Um, two major other reasons uh, will be more traffic uh, to your website, and more traffic usually means uh, more income and more clients. Uh, uh, see more said, like every company is trying to understand their clients, trying to personalize their buying experience and service experience in order to generate more profits and loyal, cl and loyal clients. Uh, now, do you think that anyone really knows how many blind people enter their website or how many epileptic? or how many people with motoric problems um, uh, probably not so um, and, and those all our potential clients or existing clients that struggle in using your websites now um, studies shows that 71 percent of web users will with disability will simplify leave the website that is not accessible uh, okay, so, so let's do the math here. Now, you have 25% disabled people. Out of them, 71% uh, will leave your website. So that basically means that an inaccessible website is losing 17% of its potential traffic and probably will not even know why. So that is like a hidden market of consumers with a huge buying power um and now the second reason to make your website accessible will probably be uh, uh brand awareness and, and social responsibility so when you are making your website accessible you can show the world you care and you can use this in your social media and stuff and and, and pass your competitors that are not accessible uh and and one last point now we are we are all responsible uh, for the future of the world we are living in okay and, and the internet by far is the most popular source of information and and all society including people with disabilities deserves the same access to this information as as anyone else so I think that as a society we must work together to make sure that the digital world will be accessible to everyone. Um, I hope those reasons are enough for, uh, for everyone. Oh my goodness, 71% of uh, website visitors that have a disability will leave the site. This is amazing and scaring at the same time. Uh, because Adam, local companies think that making their websites uh, accessible is very expensive, time-consuming, and technically challenging. Even for major corporations, uh, the process is not simple. What are international cl clients saying about the adoption uh, of uh, Equal Web using an automatic tool with uh, artificial intelligence to solve that problem? Uh, yeah, that's that's another great question, Marcelo. You, you are on fire today. Uh, uh, well, until a few years ago, they were uh, they were right. Okay, so making website accessible was a, was very expensive, time consuming, and it was a really hard river to cross. Uh, uh, but now, when you have a equal web accessible speedboat, uh, so it's really easy. Uh, and, and I don't see any reason why not all websites will do it. Um, now, regarding, uh, regarding accessibility by design, it, it is also an option. Uh, the thing is that, as we said, it's uh, time-consuming 
and very expensive. Um, I, I will give you an example, okay? Uh, we had a client that uh, it was uh, something like uh, two years ago um, that he made his uh, website accessible by design in their source code. So we hire an accessibility experts that gave him a full uh, uh, report on the accessibility errors on his, on his website. And then he went to his uh, developers, uh, those uh, fixed all of, all of the accessibility issues and then back to the auditor uh, to check again. Um, so it was like that back and forth, back and forth for a few times. And after like three months, the site was uh, accessible and the client was uh, very happy. Uh, now the whole process cost him about $7,000 and took him like uh, three months to finish. Um, by the way, it was a very simple website with like um, uh, 50 pages that cost him about three thousand dollars to build uh, to build the website. So, so he paid more than two times to make his website accessible uh, than what he paid for building and designing the whole website. Um, and after less than a year, he received a lawsuit. So he was really surprised on how, how, how the hell it happened. Uh, if, his, if he made his website accessible by design a few months ago. So, um, so he went back to the company that provided him the audit and they checked the website again for additional $2,000 and they found again many issues. And, and then the client didn't understand like how it's possible. He didn't change. He didn't change a lot on his website. Just like um, uh, add new pages, un, add new pages under uh, existing templates, and still there are many accessibility issues. Uh, so he came to us. Uh, we insert our solution into his website uh, that fix uh, most of the issues automatically, and then we made some manual test and an, t uh, testing and adjustment uh, uh, of our widget and we solve um, all uh, the accessibility issues uh, that have not been covered automatically. Uh, and the whole process took us like um, less than a month, okay? Um, and, and what most important that our solution keeping the website accessible through time, okay? So uh, also when the client insert new pages on his site, uh, and changing existing ones, his website remain accessible. Uh, and, and by the way, we also provide uh, a monitoring solution that, that can scan the website on a monthly basis and provide reports of the current accessibility level of the site and flags new accessibility issues uh, that we find. So the remediation widget plus the, the monitoring will be the perfect combination of how to make uh, the a website accessible and keeping it on a high accessibility level uh, through time. I understand, Adam. So uh, what you're saying is that making the website accessible means uh, making it first and then monitoring and keeping it uh, up to date. And with an automatic tool, this is very easy, simple and straightforward uh, okay I, I got that uh, can you tell us a couple of examples of major companies but but also middle-sized and small companies uh, that turn into uh, uh, into equal web client and uh, had a good story a good results because of that well our solution installed on more than 10,000 websites from Fortune 500 to nonprofit organizations. We are working with uh, many companies around the world, uh, such as uh, uh, Coca Cola and uh, Kimberly Clark, uh, ADT, uh, Budget, uh, Fiverr, Medtronic, Dyson, uh, the, uh, Zara, some of the NBA teams, and, and many more. Uh, and every one of our clients has seen significant increase in uh, incoming traffic. Uh, average time spent on site and, and, and new clients on boarding. Uh, in addition, a uh, hundred of our clients received demand letters from plaintiff lawyers and yet not a single one was forced to go to court or pay a settlement. Um, 
so our clients save tens of thousands of dollars in potential penalties, penalties and fees. Uh, thanks, Adam. Uh, and uh, as a matter of fact, uh, we've been experiencing a very good uh, uh, and positive return from our first movers, first clients here in Brazil, companies like Kibon, uh, Universidade Uniswan in Rio de Janeiro, uh, Bip Consulting and uh, Espaço Laser. Uh, so uh, uh, the local reception of, of the solution is be, is been very good. Uh, but Adam, we are running out of time, so uh, to end up with this chat, uh, can you give your international perspective of the advantage of becoming an early adopter uh, in digital accessibility uh, uh, technology? Um, well, uh, first, being an early adopter, you can gain uh, many competitive advantages. So there are many articles that uh, shows that early adopters organizations experience higher growth in revenues and, and in market position. Uh, in addition to that, uh, early adopters will will have unique advertising points over their competitors. So they can publish a blog post, uh, hold seminars, uh, put a badge over their website that shows uh, they are uh, digital inclusion inclusion promoters uh, and have many other unique advertising points over their competitors um, and and finally I think it's it, it's just the right thing to do uh, like if you will go to a company and ask them about accessibility accommodations uh, you will never hear anybody say um, no we just don't care uh, we don't care about uh, vision impairment, uh, hearing impairment, or any other impairments. Um, we don't care about them. Uh, you will never hear it because because everybody cares. Okay, uh, uh, it, it's just not their main concern. And until last year, it was, as we said, it was a hard river to cross. Uh, but now it's it's super easy, and it's totally not expensive. Um, so, so there are really no more excuses why not to do it. Uh, and as I said before, as a society, I think we must work together to make sure uh, that, the, the, that the digital world uh, will be accessible to everyone. Uh, we are all responsible for the future of the world we are living in. And and if and if that's not enough marcelo you know what you can offer all the next early adopters that will share this video uh 30 percent off uh on all of our plans for the next 30 business days how that sounds <laughs> in brazil we say the intern uh is acting crazy uh now we see that the president uh, is uh is acting crazy uh, but it's a, it's, it's a, a good uh, suggestion. We will follow your advice, Adam. Uh, so, uh, Adam, I would really uh, want to uh, uh, thank you for your time uh, of being with us and explaining to local market uh, what uh, digital accessibility is and, and what we've been facing uh, as a uh, global eco web when entering into the US, the uh, European and Israeli market. Thank you very much, Adam. Bye bye. Yeah, Marcelo, thank you for having me and uh, thank you for the audience that were listening to us and, um, and, and make your website accessible, everyone. Don't forget. Bye. Bom, uh...